Bandicoot Retrospective. Press start to begin. The year is 2007, and we're still talking about this game? Yeah, we still have the DS version of this game to go over. Just like the GBA version, this version of the game was also developed by Amaze Entertainment and published by Sierra Entertainment. Their goal with this version of the game was to preserve the gameplay from the console version while also playing to the DS's strengths, utilizing its touchscreen and microphone features. Will this create a unique experience worth playing, or will this game just come off as gimmicky? Let's find out. Not only does this version of the game also have a different story than the console version of the game, it also also has a different story than the Game Boy Advance version of this game. In fact, out of the three stories, this one is the most different. You know how the most important story points in the other two games is that Cortex gets fired by Uka Uka and replaced with Nina? Not only does that not happen in this game, Uka Uka isn't even in this game at all. The story starts out the same. Crash Bandicoot is chilling on Wumpa Island when Cortex suddenly appears and starts using the power of the Tiki Mask to inject Mojo into animals to transform them into mutants that he then uses to help him carry out his evil schemes. Crash saves Aku Aku from getting kidnapped by Cortex and, with the help of Coco, go off on their quest to get the Tiki Mask back and save the Wumpa Islands. So what are Cortex's plans this time? To create the Duminator machine to destroy the Bandicoots once and for all? Nope, not this time. In this version of Crash of the Titans, Cortex is creating a giant robot called the Cortex Bot, which will take over the world with its funky dance moves. While Crash is going off collecting the power crystals and gems, we also get to see Nina's perspective. That's right, we actually get to play as Nina this time. I'll get more into that when I talk about the gameplay, but this was crazy to me. Nina is tasked with mutating the tiny animals on the Wumpa Islands using her Mutato Ray Gun 3000. After shooting her first batch of animals, she realizes that she is just acting as a mere henchperson to Cortex and thinks that this is stupid. She plans on overthrowing Cortex as evil genius and plans on betraying him. After Crash defeats all of the bosses and collects all of the crystals, he goes to enter the Cortex bot to defeat Cortex once and for all. Interestingly enough, Nina meets Crash at the front door and agrees to team up with Crash in order to stop her uncle. Enemy of my enemy is my friend type shit. After going through the Cortex bot, they finally meet up with Cortex. Cortex, knowing that he can't take the two of them on at one time, pretends to give up. Now how you played the game will determine what happens next, and it gets kinda... weird. If you just go through the game collecting all of the crystals, when Crash goes to hold Cortex in place so Nina can shoot him, she'll go to shoot Crash, but Crash will deflect it, turning Nina into a baby. Crash then fights Cortex in his giant crab bot, defeating him and destroying the Cortex bot once and for all. Crash returns to Wumpa Island and tells Coco all about his adventures, as Cortex returns to his evil lair with Nina, complimenting how evil she's been. Now, if you collect all of the crystals and all of the gems in the game, when Crash, Cortex, and Nina have their standoff, instead of Nina getting turned into a baby, Crash will actually turn into a baby, causing the Cortexes to succeed. Unluckily for Neo, Nina decided to actually betray him and ends up defeating Cortex on her own. The game ends with Crash and the Bandicoots defeated, Cortex and the Cortex bot being done away with, and Nina taking control of the villains, ready to enact her evil plan. That's right, completing this game gives you the bad ending. Weird choice, but okay. When it comes to Crash Bandicoot stories, this one is alright. It's definitely not as cringy with its humor like the console version of this game is, but I mean, Cortex's plan is to rule the world with a dancing robot. If that isn't a desperate plea for the audience to laugh, I don't know what is. As far as Cortex plans go, this one is definitely the lamest. I'll give this game props though, all of the other characters in the game seem pretty in character. Hell, Tiny, just like the GBA version, isn't Mike Tyson anymore. That voice though. 
Good lord, I'll get more into that later. The story of this game is better than the console version still, but not by much. With all of that in mind, Crash of the Titans on the DS's story gets my rating of a B. I... I can't believe it. This version of Crash of the Titans. It... It plays like a Crash game. It plays like an old Crash game. To be completely real, it plays like the perfect mashup of Crash of the Titans type gameplay and classic Crash gameplay. Just like the two other versions before it, this game follows a level to level structure. In each level, you must collect the power crystal within each stage and complete certain tasks in order to collect the four gems in each stage. Hell, they brought back having to break all of the boxes in a stage. I never thought I'd miss it. Where the hybrid mechanic comes in is that you can still punch and jack your enemies in order to take control of them. I honestly think that the two playstyles mix really well. The spin doesn't even make you tired anymore. It's part of the combo! I said that! I said something along those lines in the first Crash of the Titans video! I didn't even play this game before writing that video! They took the thing I said and they did it! Oh my god! You're all gonna think I'm crazy. But this is the most fun I've had playing a Crash game in quite a while. Now, it's not like I have zero criticisms at all. For one thing, you cannot rack combos up on jacking enemies if you only use the button controls. You must use the touch controls. I know this is a DS game, but I feel like it would have been nice to give you the option to do so rather than force a playstyle onto you. Speaking of the touch controls, there are certain minigames that force you to use the touchscreen controls. Hell, even using the Roller Titan forces touch controls onto you. It wouldn't be so bad if the touchscreen controls were... good. Especially on the Roller Titans, the touchscreen controls are pretty mediocre. They're not shitty, but they're not great either. This makes the Tiny Tiger boss hell, but luckily, Tiny is able to kill himself, so he can just get lucky. These are but minor nitpicks to a shockingly good game. Hell. Even the Nina sections are fun too. These stages remind me of the Cortex levels in Crash to Insanity. All you have to do is shoot a certain amount of animals with your Mutato Raygun 3000, and then the stage ends. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's so cool when you go inside of the Cortex bot and you have to switch off between Crash and Nina throughout the stage. I'm a sucker for final stages like this. It explains why I like a lot of Sonic finales. With all of that in mind, Crash of the Titans for the DS's gameplay gets my rating of an A. Maybe I'm just biased because the only games I've played on the DS lately are Kirby games, but I didn't expect this game to be fully 3D. Not only is it a fully 3D game, but it looks really nice for a fully 3D game. Crappy redesigns aside, these models look really good for a DS game. It's honestly really impressive what this game was able to do as a third-party 3D platformer. The only model that looks iffy is, ironically, the only character whose redesign I praised. Nina's. Hers looks a little... funky. Unfortunately, the same praise cannot be given to the voice acting. You can definitely tell that this game was not their main focus. The voice acting in this game is atrocious and seems very phoned in and rushed, almost like they only took one take of each character's lines. Hell, Amy Gross doesn't even return as Nina in this version. Nina is played by Debbie Derryberry here, the same voice as Coco. Also, Tiny's voice? Holy shit. They tried to mix the Mike Tyson voice with the old Tiny's personality, and wow, does it just turn into... Master Pinnacle! That sounds like something you'd hear when your actions have consequences. As for the music, it's alright. Crash Bandicoot's music really hasn't been hitting for me since Twin Sanity. I always feel like a broken record when it comes to judging the music, but this soundtrack, once again just sounds like a generic third-party platformer on the DS. I know that's what it is, but I'm saying that it's nothing really exceptional. 
I'm not listening to the soundtrack in my car like I am with Crash to Insanity or the classic trilogy. I just as much expect to hear the soundtrack in the Cory in the House DS game as well. Just music thrown in to fill the silence. With all of that in mind, Crash of the Titans for the DS's presentation gets my rating of a B-. <laughs> Shockingly enough, completion of this game is actually pretty tame and really fun. To complete Crash of the Titans on the DS, you must collect every power crystal and gem in the game. Power crystals are pretty easy to get, all you have to do is find them. And just like most Crash games that have them, power crystals are pretty blatantly in your path. In each stage, you are able to get four gems, each gem being obtained by completing a certain task. The first gem is obtained for collecting every Tiki Mask within a stage. Just like the GBA version, there are hidden Tiki Masks hidden throughout the stage that Crash can find. None of these are super hard to find, I would usually only miss one or two when I finish the stage. The second gem is gotten by meeting the Mojo Quota for the stage. Mojo is essentially the Wumpa Fruit of this game. You collect it from beating enemies, breaking boxes, or just collecting the ones lying around. Meeting these quotas is the easiest fucking thing to do in the world because if you chain jacks between titans, you get a multiplier that makes Mojo worth up to five times their usual amount. It is not hard to get Mojo in the thousands per level. The third gem is obtained by breaking every single box in a stage. Now that's the Crash Bandicoot I know and love. What's a cool addition that I really love that blends the old and new is that some of the boxes can only be broken by the Titans. It's such a small gameplay detail, but it makes the old and new aspects of the gameplay really come together. The final gem is obtained by beating the minigame for each stage. Every stage comes with a minigame that uses the touchscreen controls to beat. Just beating them will get you the fourth gem. There's also Tiki Masks hidden in these minigames, so look out for them as well. As I said before, your completion reward for getting all of the crystals and all of the gems is... to get the bad ending of the game. You get the ending where Nina wins. This kind of rubbed me the wrong way, especially since when I play these games, I usually go for completion first. I make sure to collect everything before beating the game, so to just work hard at playing the game only to be stuck with the bad ending felt a little strange. I guess they thought it would be cool to show you a what-if scenario, but that's what the non-100% endings are for. 100% endings should always be canon. I'm looking at you, Crash 1. Either way though, the completion of this game is pretty fun and I definitely would recommend it. That final boss fight with the crab robot with Nina is pretty damn tough though, so be warned. When Sierra Entertainment and Radical Entertainment went forward with creating Crash of the Titans on consoles, they set out to go back to their roots, go back to what made Crash good and update it for the late 2000s audience. Weirdly enough, that goal was accomplished right here. This version of Crash of the Titans is the only version of the game that feels like a Crash game. With a story that's still kinda lame, gameplay that mixes old and new Crash seamlessly, a presentation that looks good visually but audibly leaves a lot to be desired, and a nice and fun completion, if you want to play any version of Crash of the Titans, this is the version to play. With all of that in mind, Crash of the Titans on the DS gets my overall rating of a B+. Honestly, this game was really fun, and I'd recommend it over any other version of this game. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video, and if you like the Crash Retrospective, please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and hit that bell so you don't miss the next episode. We also have merch in the description below where you can get our shirts, mugs, and stickers to enrich your gameplay experience. I'd like to give a special shout out to Andrew's Retro Games for being the most well-esteemed guest of them all. You could also become a channel member to get all of these videos when I'm finished editing them as opposed to when they're scheduled to come out. Next week, we'll be looking at the next Crash game in the lineup, Crash Mind Over Mutant. With that, I'm Bottles, and I bid you, my well-esteemed guests, adieu.